Numerical Computation, Chapter 9, Video 15. For the rest of this chapter, we will talk about stiffness for systems of ODE. Before we get into systems, we first take a look at a scalar equation and understand some restrictions you have to put on in your numerical approximation caused by certain effect in the equation. So let's look at the simple scalar equation. x prime equals to negative ax and x as 0 equals to 1. Here a bigger than 0 is a constant, possibly very large. So um, if you have had um, sophomore level ODE course or even in calculus, you would know this equation describes an exponential decay where the a is the rate of decay. It is not hard to show that the exact solution is an exponential function that decays with the rate a. And then x0 equals to 1 gives you the coefficient 1 in front of the exponential function. So we um, observe an important property in the exact solution. So this is exponential decay, therefore, as time grows, the x shall go to 0, right? So that's an important property. And also you see that um, the larger the value a, the faster the decay. Which means if a is really large, then after a short time, this function is almost 0. So when you set up a numerical method, and you would like to have the approximate solution to preserve um, this property here in the numerical way, okay, which we'll take a closer look now. Let's see, we now set it up by using the forward Euler's method, okay, so x0 equals to 1, xn plus 1 is xn um, plus h times x prime, which is a times xn, plug in here, and then you see xn is common factor, take out, all I have is 1 minus ah times xn, where this number in the bracket does not depend on n, so it's just a constant for every n. You can use a simple induction argument, and you can show that at step n, your solution xn is exactly this factor here, multiplied n times, times the initial value x0, which is 1 here, so I simply get this. Oops, there shall be an n there. So for the numerical solution, we wanted to preserve the same property, that is, as time grows, which means as n grows, my x shall approach 0. We see that for this to be satisfied, we need to require that the number here in the bracket has to be strictly less than 1 in absolute value. So you can solve this inequality here and find a constraint on h. And h has to be less than 2 over a. So this in the end gives us a restriction on the step size, the time step size h. h must be sufficiently small with respect to a. The larger the a value, the smaller h must be, even though your solution is almost zero after a very short time, you still have to take teeny-weeny little steps in your numerical method to preserve this important property of exponential decay. So this is a kind of an annoying stability condition. Now let's see how we can improve the stability by using an implicit Euler step. So the implicit Euler step is a first order method where um, for the x derivative it is evaluated at time m plus 1 so we will get m plus 1 instead. Okay, moving x m plus 1 to the left and solve this equation for x m plus 1 you can write it like this so x m plus 1 is just this factor here times x m. 
again a simple induction argument, will show you that for any n, xn will be exactly just this factor here to the power n. Since now a is positive and h is a time step, which is also positive, then the denominator down here is always bigger than 1, so this whole number here is always strictly less than 1 and bigger than 0, which means the absolute value of this guy is strictly less than 1. Well, that means as n grows, you are multiplying x with a factor strictly less than 1. In the limit, it goes to 0. And in this argument, there is no restriction on h, except that h shall be positive, bigger than 0, which h always does. So we say the method now is unconditionally stable. And methods that are unconditionally stable are desirable, because now you can take bigger time steps and you don't have to worry about the instability. So some remarks are in place. Stability condition occurs also for nonlinear equations. And if you're not lucky, you end up in a nonlinear equation. And you have to apply an implicit method. And it becomes unconditionally stable, yes, but you have to pay a price. Take, for example, in a generic situation, x prime equals to f of t x and x initial data is given at t0 and f is nonlinear. Then the implicit Euler would give me this iteration here, which will be unconditionally stable. But you see this is a nonlinear equation for x and plus 1, which is my unknown here. And which is a nonlinear equation to solve. It may or may not have solution or might have multiple solutions depending on f. And you will have to construct an approximate solution using maybe Newton iteration or secant iteration. And it could be very expensive. Okay, so the moral will be if your problem is non stiff, then there's no need to go into implicit which is more expensive. Hope that was useful, you enjoyed it, and see you next time.